Well, good morning to you, each and, each and every one of you, and welcome this morning to Peace Through the Word, a daily devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in beautiful Benson, Arizona, in Cochise County, Southern Arizona. But this morning, coming to you from my study uh, at my residence in Sun City, Oro Valley, Arizona. Scott Jagel, good morning, my brother from El Paso, Texas. Uh, what a blessing to welcome you this morning to Peace Through the Word. And a uh, tremendous brother. I'm heading over to El Paso, Lord willing, this coming Saturday in order to preach at San Pablo Lutheran Church in El Paso, Texas, uh, for which that particular church does a tremendous ministry uh, through Yesleta, Y-S-E-L-E-T-A, Lutheran Mission and Human Care, on both sides of the border in El Paso as well as uh, Juarez, Mexico, and also has ministerial tentacles in Cuba and uh, with uh, all over, the, quite frankly, all over. And uh, it's a beautiful ministry and would really like to encourage you uh, around the world that are chiming in to take a look at that piece of ministry. You can check that out. on They have a Facebook page and uh, it's well worth your uh, effort and time to do that. And I would also encourage you to uh, support them with your prayers and perhaps maybe even in other resources, if that might, if the Lord would lead. But uh, I think you'll be very, very much blessed. So that's coming up towards the end of the week. And in preparation, I've got a lot to do uh, that allows me to come to you early this morning. My my schedule this week is just jam packed. So uh, so I thank you for the privilege. Uh, being able to come to you early today. Uh, this morning, my brothers and sisters, we're going to be looking again at uh, our theologian, Dr. Martin Luther, and he's going to be talking about great answers from a great God. And I don't know about you, but sometimes in the um, things of life, uh, when, we, when, when we pray to God, uh, maybe we become frustrated by the either the delay in the answers or uh, with the answers that we get. And, and, and so we, we, we get upset with God with regard to that. But God is, he always gives us great answers. And it, but it's in his time frame. And that, <laughs> you know, that can cause us a little bit of consternation, you know. Because if you're like me, you kind of want it yesterday. and uh, But God's timing is always the best. It just really is. And we need to uh, intentionally take comfort in that. Okay? You know, as difficult as that may be sometimes. You know? So we're going to look at that. And it's going to be uh, in response to uh, twin brothers. And, and I'm a twin. And the twin brothers are Jacob and Esau. And they didn't get along very well. And I, I can identify that myself uh, as well. And in fact, uh, Esau was about ready to kill his uh, twin brother. Jacob, brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm just going to give you some, some uh, foundation here. Jacob was a deceiver. And if he was here today, I would probably uh, sue him you know, in a legal setting. Uh, he would deceive you. He'd look at you. And he'd have a, an agenda going on, and he would lie and deceive you and trick you. He, 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 he uh, tricked Esau out of his birthright. That's huge. You know, that's huge. And that's very bad. Plus, Jacob intermarried. He married his first cousin, Rachel, which is not good. You know, I, I don't know what your thoughts are on intermarriage, but it's sinful. Leviticus 18.6 talks about that as well as other passages of Holy Scripture. So that's not something that, that, Jesus, prom that Jesus promoted or, or looked after, you know, patted him on the back and said, well, way to go, Jacob, you know. And, and, and his first cousin was Rachel. And so, you know, and there's other instances. So, so Jacob isn't this saintless, saintly kind of guy in any way, shape, or form. But God in his grace and mercy works through sinful people to accomplish his, his purpose. So, and it, and it works for us because you and I are sinful too, you know. But that doesn't give us a license to say, to just flippantly blow this stuff off and say, well, 
you know, I can go ahead and intermarry and do whatever. Uh, not hardly. <laughs> you know? That's what St. Paul says. He says, so because I'm on, under grace, does that mean I, I just have this license to sin? Well, of course not. All right. So I'm praying that's going to be a blessing to you as we come together this morning. <laughs> okay. Kind of a long uh, preeminence here, but hope it's okay. So brothers and sisters, we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light in our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord, brothers and sisters, is a great God. And he gives great answers, okay? But he's a great God. He's a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. So, brothers and sisters, I want to share with you a couple of passages of Scripture, the first being Psalm 65, verse 5. And the psalmist here is talking about answers that we get uh, by our great God, okay? And I pray it's going to encourage you this morning. So listen to this, if you would, please. It says, By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. So our God answers us with righteousness. What, 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 what really is he saying there? In every answer that God gives to us, it is to promote righteousness. What, so what's righteousness? Righteousness is a right standing before God. So every answer he's going to give us is going to promote that. Okay? It's going to promote a right standing with God. So since that is truly the case, the answers that we receive may not be in accordance with what Ron York wants <laughs> or desires. You know, let's just take um, Jacob, for instance. Jacob wanted to intermarry with his first cousin, Rachel. So that is not righteous. So God would probably, in all, in all essence, not want to grant that. And, and I don't think he did. All right? And, but yet, he, you know, Jacob went headlong and did it anyway. All right? And so sometimes we get the same answers. You know, we're praying for something, thinking that it's okay, <laughs> you know. Yet God will thwart that answer or answer in a way that that is going to bring righteousness, a right standing with him. And it may go contrary to what we want and desire. And that can happen often, perhaps. That's why it's always good to pray the Lord's Prayer, because that prayer is one that's going to emulate a right standing with God for everything we ask. Right? Makes, all right, d does that kind of gel? <laughs> Maybe. Hope so. So that's Psalm uh, 65, verse 5. Now I want to share with you Genesis chapter 33, and I'm going to uh, read verses 1 through 4. And this is the account that Dr. Martin Luther is going to unpack for us. It's the account where Jacob meets Esau, and Jacob is scared to death because he has ticked off his brother, his twin brother Esau. Uh, his twin brother Esau was mad. I mean, think about it. Uh, your twin brother, and, and I can identify with this, you know, I'm a twin, but your twin brother 
you know, tricks you, deceives you out of your birthright and is this master deceiver. And, you know, that doesn't sit well. You know, it, it doesn't sit well today. It didn't sit well then. And so, and it's just, it just perpetuated. You know, Jacob is this master deceiver and he wasn't repenting of that and, and he just continued, you know. And so Esau's mad. So he comes and he's gonna, he, he, he's gonna do business. He's gonna declare war and, and probably come and kill his twin brother. That's how bad it can escalate, all right? So that's kind of the, the framework and Jacob is scared to meet his twin brother Esau. Scared. All right. So here we go. <laughs> here we go. So, and Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, Esau was coming and 400 men with him. Esau is meaning business. I've had it with you, brother. <laughs> you, you, you've tricked me just all you're going to do. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel in the two female servants. Jacob also committed polygamy. He got two wives. Not only did he intermarry, but he also committed polygamy. All right. So, and he put his, who put the servants with their children in front of them. Leah with her children and Rachel and Joseph last of all. He himself went on before them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. And he had prayed, Jacob had prayed that perhaps Esau would spare him because Jacob was scared. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept for joy. That's the beauty of the answer that God brought about for righteousness. He restored the relationship. And that can only happen by and through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. It can't happen any other way. So let's see how Dr. Martin Luther unpacks this tremendous truth for us this morning. It says, Jacob's anguished prayer accomplished more than he dared to ask. He hadn't expected so much comfort from God or from his brother. All he had asked for was that his brother would leave him and his family unharmed. He never thought he would receive so much kindness from his brother. Esau even ran to meet Jacob with tears streaming down from his eyes. He hugged and kissed him. You know, even if it was COVID. <laughs> We should pray with confidence knowing that God will answer our requests without delay. And he will. Let me repeat that. God will answer our requests without delay. All right. It's impossible for sincere, persistent prayer to remain unheard. But because we don't believe, we aren't persistent enough and don't experience God's goodness and help. We give up. So we must become more enthusiastic about faith and prayer, knowing that God is pleased when we persevere. In fact, God ordered us to be persistent in prayer. Ask and you will receive. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Our prayers are answered much differently actually more generously than we could ever ask for or imagine in Ephesians 3.20. Paul says we don't know how to pray for what we need, but the Spirit intercedes along with our groans that cannot be expressed in words. The one who searches our hearts knows what the Spirit has in mind. We always ask for less than we should. And don't even think God is willing to give us what we ask for. Shame on us. And we don't. And then we limit God. We don't ask for the big things either. And God says, man, why are you limiting me? All right. 
We don't ask the right way. We don't understand that what we pray about is more important than we can comprehend. <laughs> Boy, that's true. We think small, and we do. And so then we put God in this box. We say, man, you can't move. You've got to you know, do this within these parameters. God says, are you kidding me? I'm God. You're not. I don't, I'm not contained in anyone's box, especially yours. <laughs> All right? So, but the Lord is great and powerful. He expects us to ask for great, big things. All right? He wants to give them to us to demonstrate his almighty power. <laughs> all right? So we're going to pray this morning. And, and I'm going to pray for you all because I suspect that we all have relationships that need prayer. Amen? I think if, if truth were known, that's all of us. So... Uh, we're going to do that this morning because we all have those, all right? And then we're going to watch God work to restore those relationships in a righteous setting, okay? So, amen. <clears throat> oh, Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son, Jesus Christ. So blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He's come to his people. He's redeemed them. He's bought them back by his shed blood on the cross. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. So glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So brothers and sisters, let's pray for the relationships that we have with various people that perhaps are strained, maybe they are even deteriorating, uh, maybe there's conflict, maybe there's hostility, maybe there's a whole bunch of stuff. Let's pray right now for those relationships that God and Jesus Christ might bring uh, genuine uh, confession, repentance, contrition, and then restoration. All right? So let's together, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, how thankful we are to come before you this morning in your holy word. We thank you that we see where you immediately want to answer our prayers for righteousness in great things. God, we must confess that uh, as a result of being sinful human beings, the relationships that we have with people, with various people, are impregnated with sinfulness. And as a result of that, instead of righteousness being prevalent, there is a tremendous amount of unrighteousness that is ongoing. And so, Father, number one, we confess that, that these relationships are steeped in sin and that their sinful behavior being demonstrated on all sides, and that there is a tremendous need for genuine confession, contrition, and repentance. And we pray, Father, in all of these relationships, that that would genuinely happen with all parties concerned, that there would be genuine contrition, a rightful, deep sorrow for the sins that have been in our being committed. And that we would then confess, say the same things about those sins as you do, not trying to cover them up, excuse them, or minimize them. And then, Father, I pray that by the Holy Spirit, we would all then be willing to repent, be willing to go in a different direction, to maybe stop things that are being considered, or whatever the case might be, but to go in a different direction than what we are. And then, Father, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you'd bring that beautiful restoration of all of those relationships. God, you know intimately exactly 
what these relationships are and to whom they are directed. And so we take comfort knowing that you're going to hear and you're going to answer big time in righteousness. So thank you ahead of time for what we anticipate receiving in Jesus' name. Amen. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there's no finer prayer to pray than that of the Lord's Prayer. And so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, again, so wonderful, so blessed to be able to uh, welcome you this morning to Peace of the Word, and I pray that you receive that uh, this morning, a genuine, real peace through the Word of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and I pray that's going to bless you not only throughout this day, but through the rest of your life. Again, we've got a very beautiful day here in southern Arizona. Clear skies, the sun is out. Wonderful day for flying. The uh, landing gear has been retracted, so have the flaps. And I, as I mentioned, I've got a lot to get done this week before I leave for El Paso. So uh, God's blessings to you in abundance and go in his grace and mercy. Serve him as he gives you those wonderful opportunities. And until we meet again, I convey all of God's blessings to you in abundance and tremendous blue skies.